This week on Pure Brews America, we listen to stories around the campfire on my visit to the Upper Peninsula's Black Rocks Brewery. Then we jump into the mosh pit as we head down to Indiana for Three Floyd's infamous Dark Lord Day. I'm Shannon Long, founder of Brew Export, and I want to welcome you to Pure Brews America. Join me as I travel across Michigan, Ohio, Indiana, and Illinois on a journey to discover the amazing stories, people, and places that make up the craft beer industry's greatest breweries. Welcome to Marquette, Michigan, where the name Black Rocks conjures up thoughts of both incredible craft beer and picturesque cliffs. So Black Rocks is this hidden gem in the UP. The brewmasters here have a creativity and a consistency to their beer that is incredible. The, the hardest part is getting here and getting a chance to get some before it's all gone. <laughs> That's a lot of times you go, oh, I had a beer last night, it was great. You come back the next day, they got five new ones to try from. Yeah. We like to get out on our, what we call Black Rock dates. I like that I can come here with my mom and my dad and my kids. Kind of an extension of home. It feels very homey here. It's wonderful. You're going to meet people here and you're going to exchange stories and you're going to build friendships and it's that's probably one of the best things about this place. They always seem to have music playing inside and cool bands. And this brewery is the best brewery in the Upper Midwest. I'll put it up against Founders. I'll put it up against Bells. We've traveled to over 60 Michigan breweries. We like to go on beer tours and I mean, Black Rocks, it's like our, it's our favorite. So if you haven't tried Black Rocks, my God, you're missing out. Black Rocks Brewery was started by friends and colleagues, David Manson and Andy Langlois. So, so David, David and I sold drugs together. Legal. Legal drugs. For like seven years, yep, we sold pharmaceuticals. Now. Probably about four years into it, we're like, this is kind of like corporate America boring. I mentioned, I used to brew beer. It'd be really fun to brew beer. And he's like, I like beer. Let's do beer. And so we kind of said, all right, let's look into it and let's do it right. And I said, we should do all grain. We should do like the legit kind of the way the big boys do it in my basement. When our corporate said, we're gonna have a massive conference call and we're gonna have something to talk about. Yeah. And they basically said, you're all probably gonna get fired. And we've always said it would be fun to, to go legit, go pro. When they kind of made that call, we're like, this is our opportunity. In 2010, they decided to open Black Rocks, a nano brewery on the first floor of a friend's house. You're a nano brewery if you're able to carry your kettle yeah. at the end of the day and go wash it. So we were, we were doing one barrel systems and we had four one barrel fermenters. And that first night we sold out of beer. Yeah, it was crazy. Bonkers. <laughs> we kind of looked at each other like, whoa, maybe this will work. <laughs> So it would go to six fermenters, and then eight fermenters, and then 10 fermenters, which were brewing all the time. Maybe make it two or three nights, and then we're out. Done. All right, and then you just raise the glass and say, thank you, everybody, for coming. Once again, you drank us out of beer. Open till empty was awesome, until it wasn't. To meet the ever-increasing demands of the pub, David and Andy opened a production facility over three years ago. This expansion also allowed them to begin distributing throughout Michigan and into Wisconsin. The, the vibes at the pub were pretty chill, but it's not all fun and games. You guys get down and dirty and make some serious beer at your production facility. Yeah, I'm the lead production brewer. I've been here the longest. Charles is our other production brewer. We have a great team. Black Rock's whole atmosphere is to have fun and enjoy what we're doing, enjoy our lives. Nobody here takes themselves too seriously, but one thing we really take seriously is the beer. We kind of built the brewery around this old 30 barrel mash ton that we got from a, a big production brewery downstate. Founders, we think of it kind of like a heritage piece of equipment. It's really old, we love it. It's always been making good beer, so we're just kind of trying to keep up the tradition. We're probably on track for about 7,000 barrels this year, which seems huge to us, but we're still kind of a tiny, we're, ti we're a tiny brewery, you know? We have to take a quick break, but when we return, I sample some of Black Rock's most popular creations and I try to muster up the courage to take the plunge off the Black Rocks. Visit purebrewsamerica.com for more about our Emmy-winning show, including broadcast schedules and past episodes.
presents Versus. As you can see by our irrefutable science, Jack Lynx has more protein and better music than these other snacks. Jack Lynx Jerky beats the snack out of other snacks. Introducing Jack Lynx Extra Tender Steak Strips. to Pure Brews America. After checking out their brewing and canning setup, I made my way out to the Black Rocks bus for some samples. What do we got first? The Grand Rapids Cream Ale, one of our year-round offerings. So Grand Rapids, is that like Grand Rapids, Michigan? Kind of like an homage to that? Yeah, it's a play off of Grand Rapids, Grand Rapids. We named it on our way down to the Grand Rapids Beer Fest. Dry hop cream ale. Not your average cream ale. Dry hop. Dry hop, yes. Dry hopped with a little lamb in it. Yeah. Mm. Just kind of a nice, um, I don't know, I always get like Fruit Loops citrus almost out of it. Dude, like, yes. It's like, it's like lawnmower beer plus. This is a great beer. 5.5%? 5.5%. Party all day, party all night. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely perfect. All right, this is Coconut Brown. Coconut Brown, yes. Not your average brown. No, there's 700 pounds of coconut in a 40 barrel batch. That's yeah. unreal. Yeah. Native UP coconut, so it takes a long time to harvest. <laughs> well, I can only imagine. Coconut Brown's a, a beer we've been brewing for a really long time. It was um, originally one of my homebrew recipes, and it's like the only one that's actually survived. There's a lot of love in the beer. It really is, because everybody that is involved is they're excited to share it, not only because the, the, the beer is great, but because they're kind of sharing a little bit of Marquette. And it's perfect, but it's not heavy like a stout or a porter. No. It's a brown and it's light. Mm -hmm. I love it. Thank you. Aloha. Aloha, eh? Aloha. <laughs> Time to get a little hoppy. Yep. Yes. 51K, this is the mayor of Flavortown here. I do love the 51K. I'm not really an IPA girl, but um, their 51K is awesome. It's delicious. You know, just your classic good IPA, you know, mid-range, not too big ABVs, but tasty, you can drink it. 51K gives too hard to run for its money. Kind of the perfect IPA. It's got the right balance of hops and bitterness, not super hoppy. This has pretty much became our Unofficial official flagship, it's kind of rose to the top as our pretty much most drank beer, I would say. I think I've actually drank my weight in this beer. <laughs> if you figure Probably more. Oh. Well it's a great beer. I can see I can see why people love it. I mean for an IPA, the hops are not overpowering. It's definitely like a well balanced IPA. Yeah, and I, I wouldn't say quite like Midwestern IPA. It's kind of a good array of well balanced hops that have a nice dry finish to it. Awesome. Well, thanks for inviting me on your bus and yeah. let me drink some thanks of your guys' beer. Yeah. Cheers. 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 The trip wouldn't be complete if I didn't visit the actual Black Rocks, so Charles and Andy offered to be my guides. I grew up jumping off. He came from Kingsford and went to Northern, and you jumped off. Of course. My kids have all jumped off. I mean, it's just kind of a rite of passage. Like, when you're here, you jump off Black Rocks. You jump into the frigid, ice cold, insanely freezing waters of Lake Superior. And so for us, it was a, a parable for what we were doing. We were jumping into this like, in, like endeavor of craft brew. And with that, I couldn't help but be inspired to give it a try myself. The water is so cold, it literally takes your breath away. I couldn't even speak after I came up for air. 
So normally Shannon thanks the breweries and uh, the people for letting her kind of come into their world. Today we're going to thank Shannon and her crew for coming into Black Rocks and our environment and our people. So cheers! Cheers! Pure Brews America is sponsored by Fago, the original craft pop that's been made in Michigan for 110 years. Pick up a two liter or six pack today to create the perfect craft cocktail. When we started 20 years ago, the beer business was tough. So we played it safe and brewed the beers we thought people were expecting, which led us pretty much right to the edge of bankruptcy. So we figured we may as well start brewing beers that we liked. Bigger, bolder, aromatic, in-your-face beers. And luckily, it turned out a few other folks enjoyed those beers as well. So now, if it's brewed by us, it's really brewed for us. That's the secret. But you just told everybody. <laughs> At Meyer, we believe in the people who believe in themselves and bringing our customers the very best local craft beers from all over Michigan, like Founders, Bells, and Shorts. Because things that come from nearby don't just taste better and fresher. They help keep our prices low and our communities thriving. I'm Mike Stevens. And I'm Dave Ingers. Look for us and great beers from all over Michigan at your local Meyer. Welcome back to Pure Brews America. Did you know there are over 100 different beer styles? This variety creates so many opportunities for awesome pairings with jerky from our friends over at Jack Links. With so many options, where should you start? How about Jack Links Sweet and Hot Beef Jerky? You'll want to cut these two zesty flavors of delicious jerky with a little hot bitterness of a pale ale like Alpha King from Three Floyds. You could also substitute with an odd side Citra Pale Ale, Short Space Rock, or Burning River from Great Lakes Brewing Company. So visit your local Meyer store today and stock up on Jack Links and your favorite craft beer. This perfect pairing will help feed your wild side. For over 20 years, Meyer has committed to craft. Today, they've stocked their shelves with hundreds of your favorite craft beers to create the Beer Frontier. The Beer Frontier is your in-store and online home for discovering and exploring the best breweries and beers. This summer, find a few recipes to share at your next gathering with friends and family. How about Huma Loop Alicious Beer Cheese or a burger with your favorite Founders Brew? Get adventurous with your taste buds on the Meyer Beer Frontier. Being an MSU grad, thinking, my product is at Myers and Okemos? That's crazy. We're in a few of Myers steward stores, which is their very beer craft centric kind of stores. Like they decide, you know what, there's gonna be stores that we have that focus on, on craft beer and, and have amazing shelves full of craft beer. Like we, we feel pretty confident that they're gonna have Black Rocks at every UP. Meyer store. They're, they're a great store. I mean, you walk down the aisle and you go, that's pretty amazing. There's, there's, there's like 50 yards of craft beer. You know, they believe in, you know, not only craft beer in general, but, but also Michigan, Michigan craft beer. Yeah. Really push that and you can tell by how they display it and the prominence of it. And, you know, that, that's pretty important. Join us in exploring Meyer shelves and celebrating over 20 years of commitment to craft by checking out the Beer Frontier. Now it's time for the latest scoop from Hopcat. Happy hour is even better on Mondays at Hopcat. All shareables and crack fries on the menu are half off. To sweeten the deal, the local list beers, wines, and wells are $1.50 off from 3 p.m. to midnight. So get over to your local Hopcat this Monday to enjoy the savings and a pint. Find out more information at hopcat.com. 
and we were trying a bunch of different fries that our uh, chef had come up with. And there were about four baskets on this table, and after about five minutes, there were three baskets full of fries, and one basket was totally empty. You know, one of them was the crack fries, but they weren't called that. They were just one out of these eight different fries we were trying, and... Someone said, oh my God, you see why we did that basket of fries. Somebody else said, let's call them crack fries, and it just kind of happened like that. This crack fries has kind of made me famous. I think I'm gonna name my boat, thank you, crack fries. A couple years ago, to start having crack fry eating competitions, and it was kind of like, you know, a goof. Yeah, let's do this thing. And next thing you knew, the room was packed. And there were 30 people trying to jam crack fries in their mouth and all of their friends watching and hooting and screaming. You know, the crack fries are unique. They uh, had seasoned french fries before, but there's something special about them. They're good. I mean, there's, there's no doubt, you know. Obviously, uh, after the first couple bites today, it didn't really taste a whole lot, but, uh, but I have had them not in a contest setting. And they are actually, they are really good. They're a great compliment to whatever you're eating over there. Tito's Handmade Vodka was started in 1995. There'd never been a legal distillery in Texas before. Bought this land out here. It was in the middle of nowhere when I bought it, but uh, the price was right, and so it's home sweet home. And so I built a little 16 gallon pot still and put it on a catfish fryer, and that's kind of the start of Tito's Handmade Vodka. Like many of the brewers featured on our show, Tito started small with not much more than a dream of making delicious drinks. You know, my granddad always told me that people like to help people that they like. And I just, you know, go around asking friends, you know, for help. And everybody's just like, I don't have any money, but I got like Wednesday afternoon available or something. I mean, people come out and just help me. So I've just kind of learned, don't be scared to, to ask for help. You have to put the bottles on by hand and it fills them up to the right level and stick the caps on by hand and stick the bottles in the cases. So my friends would come and help me bottle at night and then when we'd finish bottling like 60 cases or something, I'd tell them I can pay you eight bucks an hour, I'll give you a case of vodka. And everybody knows that nobody drinks a case of vodka by themselves, so they go home with a case of vodka after helping me for a few hours and I'd tell them, look, share it with 20 of your closest friends and they would. So, you know, kind of just helped it get going right there at the beginning. 20 years after commercial production began, Tino's Handmade Vodka has become one of the most successful American-made vodkas. I think there's a lot of things that make Tito's Vodka different. We like to make vodka with some body in it, so it kind of tells a little story. We use corn, it's gluten-free. Won the Ultimate Cocktail Challenge, Best Vodka and Tonic. Won the World Spirits Competition, Unanimous Judge's Choice. Best Vodka out of 72 vodkas. There's nothing better out there. If I found a better vodka, I'd drink it. We featured Tito's Handmade Vodka in several craft cocktail creations this season. You can find those recipes and videos on our website, purebrewsamerica.com. When Pure Brews America returns, I explore the dark side of craft beer when we visit Three Floyds. Velastic Pickles is a proud partner of Pure Brews America and the craft beer industry. Don't forget to pick up a jar of Velastic Pickles to enjoy with your next craft beverage or Bloody Mary. At Planters, we're all about great taste, and we thoroughly test all our nuts for superior craveability. Hey, Richard, check out this fresh roasted flavor. Looks delicious, huh? Yeah. Richard, try to control yourself. I can't help it. And how about that aroma? Love that aroma. <clears throat> craveability approved. Oh, can I have some now? Sure. Help yourself. Wait, what? Irresistibly Planters. We don't frost brew our beer, and hot chicks won't appear if you drink it. Our beer doesn't come in a bow tie shaped can or need color indicators to tell you it's cold. It won't be delivered by Clydesdale horses, and to tell you the truth, we aren't the most interesting people in the world. Fact of the matter is, we don't tell stories, we just let our beer do the talking. Back in the early 2000s, Janice would have dropped off all four of her kids at soccer practice after a sit-down dinner. But Janice is a mother today, so all four of Janice's kids are on four separate paths of self-discovery, which occur at four different times in the afternoon, leaving a total of four minutes for her kids to eat. Even though dinner time has become less strict, we remain strict as ever when it comes to our standards. Made with premium cuts of 100% kosher beef, so you can feel good feeding your family no matter what time dinner is. Hebrew National, we remain strict. Shannon Long and 
today we are at the infamous Three Floyds Dark Lord Day. Let's do this thing. So Dark Lord Day is a day of its own. I mean, there's no other fest in the country that compares. I love Dark Lord Day. I am so glad to be here today. This is a fantastic beer. The beer is incredible. This beer is really good. It's my third year. Fantastic. Better than last year even. For myself, this is my third year here. I, I love Dark Lord Day. Fifth year in a row. I've been coming here for about five, six years in a row now. I love Dark Lord Day. I've been here five times, twice pregnant. I just love that this beer has brought so many people together. Eating great food, drinking good beer, meeting great people. It's a wonderful event. I love everything they do. Their food, their beer, everything is wonderful. They're really the only reason to come to Indiana. <laughs> Not the only reason, but certainly an awesome one. In fact, Dark Lord Day attracts almost 10,000 attendees to the one-day beer release with the $180 tickets selling out almost immediately. To find out more about this truly unique event, we caught up with Chris Bogus, who's been the head brewer at Three Floyds since 2006. Welcome to Dark Lord Day 2017, new and improved in May. I'm excited about it. Yes. This is my first Dark Lord Day ever. Welcome. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Tell me a little bit about like the origins of Dark Lord Day. How did this all come to be? Back in the day uh, at Flossmoor Station, they made this really strong stout beer, and I forget the name of it, but uh, Nick was like, oh, I can make a beer stronger than that. So it kind of was a competition, like an internal competition. I don't think he told them. And it was like a 90-gallon batch, like 2003, I think, was the first batch. And then in 2004, we started having Dark Lord Day. And now it's come to be uh, thousands and thousands of people yeah. come to Munster, Indiana. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about that beer? It's just a, just a big, ignorant, like Russian Imperial Stout. And then, um, you know, all the barrel-aged stuff is, takes it even to another level. It's about, was it, 14% alcohol, I believe? You got a taste of chocolate, vanilla, cinnamon, soy sauce, which is a little weird, but it works. But it's a very smooth stout, and it's why everyone is here today. The beer is very heavy. It's very Four of these, and you get a random tote bag, and the, the variant is completely random. So you either get a variant or two older bottles of this. Uh, we ended up actually getting two Hangies and two French Vanilla Moisha, which everyone was freaking out because it's a random beer selection this year. As you come out the door, uh, and it's not just me, there's a lot of people that are like, they missed out on a certain variant, or they want to get like all the variants, like a collection of them. So they'll sell beer, uh, or they'll offer money up to buy beer, and then they'll get those variants that they want. Some 22-ounce bombers of Dark Lord have been reportedly resold for more than $400. But Dark Lord is only one of the amazing brews created by Three Floyds, which was started in 1996 by Nick Floyd with the help of his brother and father. Three Floyds is considered one of the best breweries in the world, not only in the United States, not only in Indiana, on the planet. Why do you think that is? I don't know, really. <laughs> to be honest, I think our beer is really good. We like to keep it real. I think people appreciate that. Like it's kind of outer body experience. It's uh, it's it's strange. You just put your head down every day and keep doing what you're doing. That's right. I'm grinding. Being the brewmaster here at Three Floyds, take me through kind of your mainstays. Let's start with Alpha King because that's okay. the original beer, the, the flagship. It's a pretty full-bodied, kind of almost an amber pale ale, 6.66% alcohol, and uh, the user, yeah, and the user happened to be 66 as well. Then we've got Gumball Head, which is you know sort of approachable. It's pretty, it's pretty hoppy, but uh, it's easy drinker, and it's named after Gumball Head the Cat, the uh, comic book. And then uh, Yum Yum, which is our one of our newer beers that we use uh, a lot of German varietals. With that delicious. Yeah. Zombie Dust is uh, another one of our pale ales. That's uh, got a lot of citra hops, so it's real kind of dank and pretty easy to drink, good balance. I love zombie dust. Zombie dust, all day. Give me as much as they have, I want it. Zombie dust is fantastic. I think I'm like the coolest wife ever because we do have a zombie dust mural above the kegerator in our kitchen. I mean, I'm definitely a dust brother, as a lot of people in the Chicago community would say. Like, ISO dust, looking for dust every day. If I see dust on the shelf, even if it's like three, four months old, I'm getting a dust. To stay ahead in the competitive craft beer world, Three Floyds hired famed brewmaster Todd Hogg in October of 2016. 
All right, I'm the luckiest girl in the world. I'm at 2017 Dark Lord Day at Three Floyds, hanging out with Todd himself. How are things going? Good. There's a bunch of people here. The weather is, for once, really, really nice. You know, this is my first time being at Dark Lord as an employee at Three Floyds. So to see how much work and time and energy and care the staff puts in is mind-blowing. Like, the attention to detail that everyone just chips in and helps. It's not one, like, makes them do it. They just do it. And they're all working the event and we're managing the people. It's amazing. So, what do you think makes Three Floyds so special? Well, obviously they're branding. I hate that term, but that's I don't know what what sums it up any better. The labels and the, just the names, and it's very much more pointed at Nick's interests. Like I don't even know what half the it's names. It's a little nerdy. Right. Exactly. Well, that's just it. Is like no one realizes that there is actually they're not just pulled out of a hat. They have some unique story behind them, and it might not make sense to anybody else but Nick, or Chris, or a brewer. Up, up yeah. there. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, so five years ago we played, I mean I've been in this band since the late 80s. Um, I joined Power Mad when I was in high school. And so we've you know been on and off for, since then. And we played here five years ago at um, Inside when it was the bands were still inside. And so now the production is, the whole event's gotten bigger. So we're playing outside on the big stage, which is really exciting. Besides the mind-blowing heavy metal music, one of the other hallmarks of Dark Lord Day is bottle sharing. Yeah, so that's one of the big things about Dark Lord Day is kind of the sharing and uh, bringing beers from all over the world. So Dark Lord is definitely a focus here, but you can bring some things from your region and, uh, and really enjoy other, uh, other beers from other places outside of Indiana. It's amazing. I mean, you don't even have to know anybody and people just love to hand out beers and share. You get to meet people all the time from all across the country. It's just, it's a festival like no other, really. I've seen many people from at least Pennsylvania, Oklahoma. Like I met a couple people from California, a couple people from Florida. You know, they get to try beers you never get to try before. And we tried a ton of different beers that we didn't have. I mean, we brought like combined 16 different beers. And we've had probably 40 different beers today, which is awesome. The sharing is one of the most fun parts of the event. It's sharing beer from all over the country, enjoying it, and then coming back and enjoying some more Free Floyds. In fact, I brought the Dark Lord with me right here. I just had my mind blown at Dark Lord Day. Cheers! Yeah.